Hello and welcome to Early Childhood Ireland's podcast. Our podcast series features interviews and discussions on all issues relating to quality early learning and care with a range of speakers who are leaders in the areas that matter to Early Childhood Ireland members. I'm Maura Corbett and I work with Early Childhood Ireland. In these two episodes, we're marking the anniversary of COVID arriving in Ireland by looking at the impacts that the pandemic has had on children, their families, and the early learning and school age care settings that they attend. So to hear the story of one Early Childhood Ireland member, I'm delighted to be joined in this episode by Orla Doyle, the owner of Carrie Brishta and Kilegni Early Learning and Care and School Age Child Care Settings in Wexford. Orla and her husband, James, work full time in both settings with their highly qualified management teams, and they're hugely committed to the provision of high quality care through continuous involvement in reflection and participation in a range of programs to support excellence. And I know Orla will mention some of these. So Orla, you're really welcome. Good morning. Hi to all your listeners as, as, as well, Marie. How are you? So Orla, can we start by hearing a bit about the development of your settings? When did you open? What's your ethos? Um, okay. You know, how did Carrie Brishta come to be the setting it is today and Kilegni along the way? Um, I suppose we started off in 2006. Um, very small, very, um, I was, I'm a, I'm a child minding actually, like before this and then that like expanded. So we built our first place. Um, and then in 2012, then we built another place on site. Uh, we're very lucky. I, I married a farmer, so we had 30 acres uh, on site to develop. Um, and being from a farming background, kind of outdoor, was just very natural to us that we saw our own children and how much they loved outdoor. Um, so I suppose we we wanted that provision to be um, to be able to work with the regulations which we. We, we have done along the way um, uh, and uh, yeah, it, uh, then we combine that with the approaches of kind of Montessori, um, Reggio Emilia and, and Forest Schools. Um, we made our own ethos and philosophy out of all of those that we, we merged them all um, in, into what it is today. And Kilegni is a second setting. Kilegni, yeah, it's, it's actually seven k from from um, Chicago. So it's 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 an old old schoolhouse. Um, so it's very very beautiful. It just has that kind of a natural ambiance to it that is um, suited to uh, actually very young children. So it works very well. Yeah, great. And it's quite near Carrickbridge, isn't it? It's about seven k. Yeah, yeah. It's about okay. 7K. Okay, so you and James are able to... We're um, over and back every day. Yeah. 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 So can you take us back to that day, the 12th of March in 2020, when uh, Tishuk, then Tishuk Leo Bradford ordered the settings to close? Absolutely. Um, I think, Marie, it was the shock. It was almost like a bereavement had hit me. Um it was for every provider, I'm sure, right through the country. Um, there was an eeriness that came over the settings for those few days. There was a sense of loss. Um, I just walked through the settings and it, it was overwhelming, the feeling. Um, I've never experienced anything like before. And I really hope I never experience anything like it again. Um, but, you know, I suppose then the, the, the initial shock just wore off. Um, and I use my oldest and best coping strategies is to work through it. Um, and just in this very unexpected time, to, just to plan and to use my time um, to reopen the place as actually safely as we could for everybody. Um, so, yeah, so that's what we did. Yeah. Yeah. So straight straight away in March, you, you you were planning your reopening strategy. That's it. Yeah, it took three months. It took the, it, it actually took that. We it was a couple of days that, as I say, we were totally in just like numb. Um, and then you pick up the pieces and you say, OK, we have to get going here and uh, get this open for these children. Yeah. So mm. that was my we have to carry on. Yeah. yeah so what did you do? How was the reopening in June? Okay, so we devised a plan um, uh, that would see us 
I suppose partnership with families is enormous to me. So t- to tell me that I couldn't have the parents come in was huge. Um, and I, I really, really struggled. So I suppose if I if if the families can't come in, then we have to go out. And that's what our our solution was. Um, so in order to, to make that happen in Ireland, we know it rains a lot. So we had to put in um, shelters. Um, and um, we had to have outdoor eating areas. Then um, we had outdoor toilets. We that, that took a considerable amount of work. Then I suppose we were thinking with ratios, you know, I suppose the safest way was for one adult to be with a small cohort of children. So basically we split ourselves right up, right through the settings. Um, so basically every everyone had a very, very low like ratio and they worked on their own with, the, with the, their own little children. And it worked really, really well. Um, I suppose it was always my plan and the dream was to have this kind of a provision in a Chicago and a Chicago. So out of the worst of situations comes good. Um, and you know, uh, it, it was it was difficult, but it it as I say, it was so rewarding to be able to make this kind of happen, you know. Um, and then on the twenty third or the 29th of the third, I should say, we opened our doors with and we were eager. Um, there was a sense of relief in the settings. You could feel it, it was tangible. Um, the COVID numbers within the areas were low. Um, so this was, back, this was back in June. This was back in June. Um, so we were very comfortable with it. Uh, we had every policy, we had done the, the homework. I, I, I have an excellent you know, team that were just behind the doors kind of thinking up of every scenario. Um, so it was really well organized. And I think it was reassuring for the children and for the families and for the team ourselves. We, we, we knew you, what we were doing. Yeah. And you had done things like videos. We, we have one of those videos on our reopening website where yeah. you had prepared the children and the families for. Oh, yeah. And you know, what fully, that, look like. that prepared us too because it mm. was almost like um, it, it, it was almost a rehearsal of kind of what was going to come for the weeks ahead. So mm. everyone was was a winner for that, Mary, and um, it just worked really, really well. Um, it was a simple thing, but it definitely gave everyone a step-by-step approach as to, you know, we have to remember they didn't come in the normal entrance that came in anymore, and now it was all new. There was, a, there was an entrance and there was an exit, a kind of exit. It was a one-way system. Um, mm. All, you know, the morning snacks went into an outdoor fridge rather than the usual fridges. And so I suppose I think seeing is believing. And then when you have it in a video, you can you can just see how this is going to work for us, you know. Um, mm. so, yeah, it, it was it was very beneficial for everybody. Yeah. So um, so June came, September came, the CC scheme came back and then December came. Yes. And how did that feel? Yeah, that was so different. Um, I suppose we were, it, it was very different purely from the point of view from kind of Wexford was badly hit with COVID over Christmas. Um, so we were nervous. We were all nervous. Um, I, I don't normally suffer with nerves too badly, but this is, I had a huge sense of responsibility to make this work. Um, I knew a lot of our families, they needed us to open on, on the 4th. Um, and I had a responsibility to be there for them. So, you know, our teams were absolutely behind us um, and they were just simply incredible. Um, what it did require was a huge amount of work of the, of the logistics of actually managing. As I say, we had a plan and now the plan was coming into play. We had to mm. plan for if somebody had to go into isolation that we had somebody else to replace them in, the, in to keep the place open. So we had two cohorts of our staff at all times, one at home and one in work. Um, but you know, that did take a bit of managing, all right. But um, I have to say they were simply amazing. Yeah. 
So at that stage, you had moved from managing the restrictions to managing the situation. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and that's exactly the way it was. Um, uh, yeah, and, and you know, the, we had, I suppose, thankfully, we were very, very fortunate. Having said that, any illness was treated as though we had COVID. Uh, like myself included, if I had a head cold, I was gone. I was gone for 10 days, you know. And I could, like at one point, it, it just went 17 days. And I suppose that was the biggest challenge was the guidelines were kept changing. Um, so it was 10 days, now 17 days, then back to 14 days. <laughs> that, was, that, was the, that was a bit tricky. Um, but, you know, everyone was doing their very best and, and um, you know, in like in, just including all the government departments. So it was just, it was firefighting. That's what it was, you know. But thankfully, we're, we're on the 3rd of March now. Yeah. Yes. And it'll be later in March by the time, um, by the time this podcast is, yeah. is, is broadcast. So at that stage, the ECC children will be back, yeah. hopefully. Yeah. Yes. And yeah. we'll be in a, in a, in a better place nationally and 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 locally so you know looking back on the on the year that we've had um have you thoughts on you know kind of keeping the positives of you know kind of what you've developed your pedagogy as being more outdoor keeping all those positives while we you know look forward to a time where covid is uh, a memory yes. rather than a reality I have, I have considered it. And as I say, out of the worst situations has brought us to the highest, highest quality we've ever, ever been at, uh, at Mary. So, you know, I'm extremely grateful and to the government as well, because without their financial support, I couldn't have ever put in the amount of, um, of access life facilities that we have now. So, you know, that's, that's pretty amazing, yeah. So uh, out of the worst situations does come good, you know. Um, right, yeah. right. And, and you, you know, you've always had a, a, an ethos of, of being outside and I suppose being able to put those structures outside to enable children to be outside even more in mm. all the kinds of weather that we get here. Mm. As, mm. Um, uh, you know, you mentioned earlier about having, uh, being influenced by the forest school ethos and uh, so you've been able to really, I suppose, it sounds like implement that and, and be even more outdoors than you would have been this time last year. Yeah, uh, absolutely. And even in, in you know, Shikalegni would be on a, on a smaller, smaller scale. So, you, you know, we did the very same thing just on a smaller scale there and, and it has worked tremendously. Um, so it, it just, I suppose you have to think a partnership with parents um, and, and this is a really really difficult time uh, you, the, the anxiety levels are huge um, you need to be able to talk to people face to face we wear our masks we're in shelters there's air is ventilating through us all the time we are as safe as we can be there's always going to be an element of risk but we have to manage risk and we have to live safe um, we have to give these children and uh, to make this as normal as we can for them. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So that's yeah. That's my I think, you know, that, that bit about, you know, in the mid managing the risk and keeping things as normal as possible for the children, I think, you know, that's mm -hmm. key, keeping mm -hmm. that partnership with parents mm -hmm. approach. So, Orla, thanks a million. Um, you must so your experiences, um, you know, they reflect those of, of many settings. There absolutely, to, yeah. I, yeah. I've been I've I've been speaking to providers up and down the country, and everyone has had the same. And they've been all on this remarkable journey. We've never mm -hmm. had a year like it before, and we never will again. And you know, yeah. we just take the best out of it, and you know, that's we it. Move on. That's yeah. it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, Orla, thanks a million, and uh, thanks to all the listeners for uh, listening to Early Childhood Ireland's podcast. And remember, if you've enjoyed the podcast. Uh, tell your friends and colleagues and we hope you'll join us the next time.